A month ago, I sowed some green manure, Hungarian grazing rye, and this is it. It's come up well, despite being rather cold. And although it looks a little sparse at the moment, there's nothing to worry about, because what I'm really interested in is the root growth, which will be forming a good web underneath the soil, bulking it up, adding organic matter, and also providing a cover above the ground to stop weeds growing. So that's fine and set for the winter. What I want to sow now are some onions that will grow steadily over the winter and then give me an early crop next year. First of all, I think I need to rake that over. If you remember, we have potatoes in here, which I lifted. These were Charlotte and they've been good. But when I lifted potatoes, I added compost, forked it over. And although it's rather dry, that's good soil. Now, overwintering onions are sometimes called Japanese onions because a lot of them have Japanese varieties. I've actually got a couple of varieties I've grown before, are reliable and I like the taste of. And taste is always the important thing. I've got two varieties. There's a, a white onion called Radar. Good, really tough, but quite a delicate taste, which I like very much, and also electric red. Red onions are colour, they are glamour, and also they tend to be slightly sweeter. And the best thing to do is just dib holes about four or five inches apart. Obviously, the wider apart they are, the bigger the bulb. And I don't like onions too big. I think a tennis ball is perfectly big enough. Just do a row along there. These will be ready for harvesting about June, early July, so just a month or six weeks ahead of main crop. But the theory is that you store your main crop now, and they will last you through till about April or May, and then these follow on in succession. Now there's very little else to do, but you do need to keep an eye on them, because birds tend to come along and they see this thing wiggling up, and they pull at it. And it's quite common to come down in the morning and find them scattered around, and that is birds. And the best way to counter that is to cover them with fleece and weigh them down until you see good green shoots, which means the roots have grown and anchored into the soil. It doesn't always happen, so I'm not going to fleece them straight away. Now you dip a hole to put it in, because there's a basal plate that the roots grow from, and if you just ram it into the soil and almost screw it into the ground, there's a real danger of damaging that and therefore affecting root growth. I actually quite often use my finger instead of a dibber, although you could argue that my fingers were made for dibbing. Now I'm watering these in just to make sure that the soil, which is very dry, firms around the bulbs. So I'm using a rose rather than a direct jet, which would just knock the bulbs out of the holes. Right, that's a job done. And nothing else to do now, except for keep them weeded. Now I set my carrots here back in April and broadcast them. And the reason for broadcasting was so that I didn't have to thin. And the reason I didn't want to thin was that just attracts carrot fly. It doesn't stop them, but if you just dig them up when you need them, the risk of getting damaged by carrot fly is much less. And they've been a good crop this year. We've been eating them for the last couple of months. Now, these are not award-winning, but they're a perfectly good size and very tasty this year. And that's what I grow them for. They're for the kitchen, not for the show bench.